Thanks for joining me on episode 962 of the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. My name is Sean Diemi. I'm a Christian financial advisor. I'm the host of the Dollar Savvy Podcast. And I challenge you to invest in yourself, invest in others, develop your influence, impact the world by using your time, your talents, and your treasures to live out your calling. Uh, find your path to financial freedom. And one way to be inspired to do that is to listen to my friend, Scott Mater, the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. We all recognize it and we begin to get cynical about it. And we begin to push back against it. And the change, number one, is harder. Number two, takes longer. And number three, doesn't actually last. But when we recognize that the leader truly does have our best interest at heart, then we begin to recognize that change and resonate with it, and it becomes easier, it moves quicker. Welcome, and thank you for joining us on the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. If you truly desire to become the person who God wants you to be, then you must learn to use your time, your talent, and your treasures for your true calling. In the Inspired Stewardship Podcast, you will learn to invest in yourself, invest in others, and develop your influence so that you can impact the world. In today's Spiritual Foundation episode about investing in others, I talk with you about Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 through 28. I also share what it means to serve first. And I talk with you about how service first creates change. Let's talk about Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 through 28. In this conversation, there's a conversation going on between Jesus and the mother of two of his disciples. And in this section, it says, But Jesus called to him and said, this is one of the disciples. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Notice a couple of things in this, and we're going to break down this passage as we talk about what it means to serve first. First off, Jesus didn't yell at them or correct them for wanting to be first or wanting to have greatness or wanting to be leaders. In fact, this desire to achieve, to do well, to excel is natural. It's a God-given desire. And I think Jesus recognized that. But Jesus then says the road to greatness is through servanthood. And look at these statements. The first thing that Jesus points out is that great servants and great leaders don't try to control others. You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people. You know that others lord over them. This idea of lording over others, having a desire to control others through guilt or fear or shame or just power is not the kind of leadership that's being called out. Next, Jesus says, great servants and great leaders don't misuse their influence. He says, you know that the officials flaunt their authority over those under them, that somebody who's put into a position of power and then uses that stature and that power and that official title to take control of others isn't really leading. And then he turns things on their head and says that great leaders function differently, but among you it will be different because great leaders want to influence whoever wants to be a leader among you. Again, pointing out it's not wrong to want leadership. It's not want wrong to desire to be great. It's wrong to do it in the wrong way. And then he says, whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. They must put themselves second. They must put others first and God even before those. The great servant is somebody who is willing to have the attitude of servant to others. 
it's not necessarily a term of dishonor either. Recognize it's it's a, a a term that means somebody who serves others, who takes care of others. It, it's a a noble sacrifice that we're talking about here. And then it says that great servants and great leaders see themselves even as slaves. The first among you must be your slave. Here, an even lower title, a lower word is used. Somebody who is owned by someone else, someone who does not even belong to themselves, but belongs to their master is the role you must take. And I think Jesus is pointing out here that we have a master too, in God, in Christ, that we must serve, and we must be willing to do anything and sacrifice anything for that master. We have the humble position of being a slave to Christ. And in fact, if you think about it, this is giving us an example of how to have leadership, because it means we must serve first. We must always look to others first. We must Think about what it is that others need before we think about what we need. Godly servants will have that kind of cause, that kind of servanthood, that kind of mentality, because service first creates true and lasting change. People are cynical about people in leadership. I have that feeling myself at times. There are times that I see leaders making decisions, and I recognize that the decisions are made out of selflessness. And then there are other times where I see leaders making decisions, and I believe that the leader is making that decision from a selfish mentality, from a me-first mentality, not from an others-first mentality. And when that happens... We all recognize it, and we begin to get cynical about it, and we begin to push back against it. And the change, number one, is harder, number two, takes longer, and number three, doesn't actually last. But when we recognize that the leader truly does have our best interest at heart, then we begin to recognize that change and resonate with it, and it becomes easier, it moves quicker, and it actually ends up lasting longer. So if you want to have true leadership, if you want to be a true leader, you have to take it from the attitude of being a servant and being a slave to others. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for listening to the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. As a subscriber and listener, we challenge you to not just sit back and passively listen, but act on what you've heard and find a way to live your calling. If you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor, go over to facebook.com slash inspired stewardship and like our Facebook page and mark it that you'd like to get notifications from us so that we can connect with you on Facebook and make sure that we're serving you to the best of our abilities with time and tips there. Until next time, invest your time, your talent, and your treasures, develop your influence, and impact the world.